that we need to continue to stand strong to defend everybody's rights and freedoms. Well, guys, it's time to do my dishes up. Yeah. I saw, um, um, what's his name? Housing dude. Um, Sean Fraser. Sean Fraser debating yesterday with uh, Latzman. Melissa N Latzman? Yeah, I think that's her name. I don't know. I'm pretty horrible with names, so. Um, I saw them debating housing. Polya versus, uh, versus uh, the liberals, or his housing programs. Yeah, let's have a conversation about that. But right now I need to get some water so I can do my dishes. So Sean, <laughs> Sean Fraser, this is my house, hard to believe six months ago I was a homeowner and now this is my life, yeah that's why that playlist is called my new life, yeah this is, this is housing in Canada, affordable housing in Canada these days yeah and you know what you didn't build this one for me well water's probably boiled by now oh yep yep she boiled Looking in my my messy house. It's my house. You have no right. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? You have no right to look in there. I don't go looking in your house. The fuck are you looking in mine for? All right. Get our dishes done. Here. Well, that wasn't quite enough hot water, but be what it is. I don't have one of those fancy things you guys have these days. It's called a tap, I think, or hot water heater. I forget what it's called now. Hey, Sean, maybe you can tell me. Maybe you can remind me. What are you guys putting in those new houses that you're building? Um, as you're complaining about the, the, the conservatives and what they did back when they were in power. What is it you're doing? Exactly. What do you put them in the houses? Gives the hot water whenever you need it. You don't have to boil like I'm doing. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's been been three months now living out here without an income, without a job. Who the heck hires homeless people? <laughs> yeah, and I mean honestly, I'm really not capable of holding down a job these days. I don't have the energy levels. My body hurts too much. But, so I can't afford to rent one of your houses that you're building. So this is my home. Anyway, I, 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 I didn't want to tell you about me. I don't want no sob, man. Hey, I'm making the best of it. And frankly, God, it is gorgeous out here. Hey, you want to see? Let me see, let me show you my... When I walk out my bedroom door, This is my view. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's uh, that's pretty cool for a view. 
is absolutely cool. And we got some random dog. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <coughs> so, I want to get into the meat and bones of what I was actually trying to talk to, talk about this shit here. Um, I heard you and Melissa Landsman going at it about how many, who's built more houses, or who's got a plan for more houses, or all that jazz. And, you know, Melissa Landsman uh, brought up a good point, and you brought up a good point, actually, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bash on you for your good points, I'm gonna actually give you credit for your good points. You know, um, Canada's population growth has been about 300,000 a year, um, 300 and change-ish, and it's been about that for, oh god, 15, 20 years now, it, it, through the conservative government as well. Um, and housing prices that started skyrocketing back then. There's a big difference between what uh, the conservative government was doing and what you've done. And I'm talking you, Sean Fraser. Not just the Liberal Party, of course the Liberal Party as well, and you know, Captain Happy Socks. Um, but you, you, you decided, give me one sec. Guess I should have done a couple of bowls. I'll do them next. Um, you decided in your previous job, regardless of what anybody said, and even your own department was telling you, um, you shouldn't invite that many people into Canada. It's gonna disrupt the housing market, which is already in bad shape. Because during, like to be fair, during the Harper era, housing prices were going insane then too. But the difference is, Harper didn't increase the number of people vying for those same apartments like you did. It's a huge difference, huge, huge difference. So now you got put in a position where you could actually fix the problem that you created. You did this. You put me in my new home because I can't afford to rent a house. How could I? I'm taxed to the nuts. Hold on, be right back. Good little tip when doing dishes. Get your dirtiest things, do them last, but fill them up with water and maybe just a, just a drop of soap. And uh, then it makes it easier when you come to wash them. Anyway, off topic. So, I had it good. I had a really good life happening for me back in 2015. You know, there were some shitty things happening in my life but I had a good life. You know, I decided that day, I think today I'll buy some new dishcloths. I could do it. I could go out, I could buy it. Then it got to the point that I can't afford to go buy dishcloths. Then you shut down my country. Oh, well you didn't, but yeah. So anyway, I, I need to get back on topic. Sorry, I get rambly like this. Just bear with me. You, uh, you ignored your people telling you not to expand immigration as fast as you were because we weren't building enough houses. It would cause an even bigger housing crisis than we were already having. Which is true because we were, in, we were having about 300,000 people a year come into Canada 
Actually, I think it was like, I think it was just under 300,000. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on numbers. Hey man, I'm a homeless man. Give me a break, okay? Um, <coughs> I think it was around 300,000. And Polyev, as housing minister, only created 196,000 uh, houses. That's a fair argument. And of those houses, only six were affordable. So then you became immigration minister and we were already running a deficit of 100,000 houses approximately and just, just based off rough numbers that I, I understand them to be. Um, we were already running a deficit of housing for about 100,000 uh, units. And you're so proud of the fact that he only built six uh, uh, affordable homes. Well, you know, whether you buy or sorry, whether you build an affordable home or a high-rise penthouse. Oh, how much did we pay for that penthouse in um, in New York there? What was it, $9 million or something? Doesn't matter whether you build $9 million penthouses or you build affordable homes. Affordable homes happen because of supply and demand. You know free market system you guys don't like. So if you increase the demand on the number of housings, price goes up, rents go up. You increase the demand for rental units, rents go up. It's, it's, not, fucking, it's not rocket science. But then you double down on it. Well, your boss did and taxed us to living oblivion so we can't even afford to do what we were doing. Um, now, as housing minister, you're still only building 200 and some odd thousand houses, but you're inviting how many people? Oh, no, no, that's right. You've knocked it down now to 300,000 a year. But how many was it last year? You know, when or was it last year or the year before? I can't remember now. I have other worries on my mind remembering exactly what year you were in what department. Um, it was like a million people or something you invited in that year. But we're still only building 200,000 houses per year. You invite a million people in. What do you think is gonna happen to the economy? What do you think is gonna happen to all the jobs, the housing? The healthcare, you know, all those things that Canadians depend on. Those, those services, like the ones you're trying to bring in now, um, that Canadians depend on, and you're trying to sell us on new services in this economy. Sorry, I keep getting off track. Affordable housing and uh, non-affordable housing. If you create supply and demand for housing, you create, if you're gonna invite 300,000 people into this country and you wanna make affordable housing, you should be making 350,000 houses. That's how you're gonna create affordable homes. If you're not creating the amount of homes that Canadians need, it don't matter whether you build them affordable or not. They're not affordable because everybody's got to compete for them. So, yeah. Look how well we did with six houses. What are you going to build? 20? Oh. 100? Ooh. 100,000. We'll, we'll be generous. You're going to build 100,000 affordable new homes. How many home, How many Canadians are living like me right now? I bet you it's over a hundred thousand. I'm done with you. You know, Sean, I've, uh, sorry, I do have one more thing to you to say, you know, life has kicked me in the balls pretty hard. And, uh, all the services that you've offered, Canadians, 
don't do a lick of good for me and you know what that's fine it is what it is um I know my my prospects in this world are running low so I'm gonna give it the best go I can try and admire this land for what I knew it for back in the day but to be honest I've accepted the fact my life is pretty much over I'm gonna ride this out as long as I can and uh, when that hap when that's I can't ride that out anymore maybe I'll sign up for one of your programs you know one of those uh, socialist programs that you've created for us yeah. I can't afford to live in your world so now this is my world when I can't do when I can't afford to live in this world I guess I'll just sign up for your social program. I think you call it MAID. Welcome to the Fringe.